Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today is the 21st of September 2020 and um, I finally found the time to create or record uh, this video even though I wanted to do this for some period of time uh, like a couple of months back but due to time constraints and other obligations I never really found uh, the time to do so but because uh, hopefully in the coming days I'm going to get rid of the item that you see in front of you well now you could say uh, freedom and laziness is not an excuse anymore so I just basically have to record uh, this video so naturally your host remains unchanged this is still David or Dave and this particular video we're going to be doing something which I fancy very much something I like to do even when I was a small boy or child and uh, the trend continues also in my uh, late 30s. So we're going to be doing a sort of a uh, tear down, disassembly, take apart video. I've done se several of those in the past and interestingly I got great responses, even though of course they were lengthy ones. So even this video is not going to disappoint in this manner. And what we're going to be uh, disassembling is another uh, tech uh, based unit or machinery in this case a sort of a very general household appliance and what you see in front of you is your general um, Bosch steam ironing unit with of course the detachable uh, handle um, itself and this one in particular is a Sensex DS37 model edition Rosso it has a power capability of 3100 watts even though the actual heater is supposedly capped at around 1500 watts. Uh, the actual, you know, sort of a long model name is uh, TDS 373117P01. But don't worry, all of these uh, specific technicalities are going to be listed in the description part of the video. Before we proceed to the actual disassembly section, a quick note on the organizational viewpoint or how the video is going to be divided. I'm thinking probably four parts. Uh, first, a general introduction. So a little bit about the history of the device, how I acquired it, what's wrong with it. Yes, because it is not a fully working one. And then um, we're going to do a sort of a preliminary test followed by the actual disassembly. And here uh, probably another uh, sub point, maybe we're going to do another test. And then if time will permit, I will do actual disassembly of the detachable handle as well because the main focus is going to be the disassembly of the main unit of this video and then of course we're going to have some conclusional notes and that's pretty much about it so let's start with the introduction now uh, how I came across this uh, item uh, last year when I was volunteering at some company I met some interesting people and one of those was a peculiar co-worker who decided one day to just simply uh, dump all of his broken or outdated electronics and appliances into the company's bin or trash. Interesting. So this thing definitely stood out and I decided to take it home. Uh, first disassemble it, clean it, test it and then of course determine possible solutions to the problem. Because uh, this is usually my MO, this is how I work. I never uh, turn on or power up something that I come across, which is, you know, in a presumed state of faultiness. I always take it apart and clean it. That's the first thing that I do. Then I try to uh, seek possible solutions to uh, outgoing or occurring problems, if they arise, of course, because most of the time, uh, the best thing that you can do in order to solve many problems is to just simply clean whatever you find or breaks down in your household that's the first thing that pretty much anyone should do and fixes most of the issues but of course with this particular item this was not the case i realized that after doing all the cleaning and disassembly that the main fault of this unit uh, was an audible type of problem so when you turn on uh, the appliance it gives off a very irritating, obnoxious sound. Something comparable to a, you could say, a regular air compressor. Definitely that kind of a sound. But it's not uh, naturally the same audible level. 
but definitely something you cannot listen to, let's say, even 10 or 15 minutes, yet alone an hour. But of course, you know, it depends on the person. I'm very uh, light on my ears. So, um, anyways, a quick note on the cleaning. Uh, so, I first primarily focused on the intake section of the steaming unit, in particular, the hoses. So, I tried to get rid of all the calc buildup, so those calcium carbonate, sodium uh, deposits on the intake section of the hoses, which I did and managed to get rid of all of them successfully even around the two electromagnets, which are responsible for uh, pushing the water from the reservoir into the heating uh, chamber. So I cleaned all of that up and then I focused uh, on to the actual heating chamber, which has uh, the heater inside. And, but that was an interesting story altogether. So when I removed the chamber away from the unit, um, I tried, you know, just regularly rinsing it with tap water and, you know, there were fairly decent chunks of white deposits falling out and then I decided, you know, I'm going to try slightly hitting it with a hammer and that opened the floodgates a lot. There were large sections flying out through one of the portholes and then uh, that wasn't enough for me. I said, well, let's try flushing it a little bit with apple vinegar and I did that as well. Also. Uh, heating it a bit and uh, heating the vinegar and pouring it in and uh, clogging the two um, holes and rocking the chamber back and forth also a bit hitting it with the hammer and after that you know there was like uh, a cesspool being uh, opened or the sewage there was a lot of white stuff going all around I thought I was going to almost uh, clog up the sink well okay I'm exaggerating and then I decided to have a inspection look. I used a endoscopic camera, you know, the ones that you can get off eBay, and plugged it into my phone. And there was one of those holes uh, on the chamber that was wide enough so I could get inside. And then I had a look, and actually I was able to remove all the uh, calcium and other deposits build up on the inner walls of the uh, heating chamber so that was really good so after that i focused my attention on the outlet section so the hosing as well but i realized that there is nothing to be cleaned so after that i uh, switched my attention to the actual detachable handle so the heating element underneath because you also have holes there as well. But this was now a different story. I wasn't able to clean uh, those small holes very effectively. Uh, so I did try gently uh, hitting uh, that uh, section of the unit as well. And there were uh, small particles of uh, white stuff falling out. So I think that probably uh, to some extent uh, that section is still a bit clogged up. But I'm very reluctant to try to, let's say, uh, dipping that uh, section uh, into, let's say, into a bath of vinegar, just to basically a little bit cover it. I'm very hesitant to do that because, um, well, I might uh, damage uh, the unit. So that still remains sort of a mystery, but everything else is pretty much cleaned. Now that we have uh, the introduction covered, so we can switch to the demonstration part of the video. So I'm going to plug the unit, fill the reservoir with distilled water, turn it on, and then you'll be able to hear uh, that obnoxious air compressor style noise. Okay, so the steaming station is uh, connected to the AC extension cord. Uh, as you can see, of course, water has been added. Okay, so now I'm going to turn on uh, the red button and get ready to turn down the volume on your speakers. So let's go. As I said, it's very loud.
Yeah, so that's how it works. Sometimes it's very loud, other times not so much, but you know, very obnoxious noise. Okay, so we have enough of this. Okay, uh, before we go into the actual final disassembly with the main part of the video, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the unit from various angles, uh, probably two to three seconds pause per uh, angle, and then we're going to actually start taking this apart. I did try cleaning the reservoir as much as I could. Here we definitely have two screws that will need to be removed. Well, rust definitely found its way in here. Overview of the main control panel with all the buttons. And here you have two more pairs of screws that need to be removed. So this is now the bottom. Here you can see the sticker and this knob is basically for cleaning the uh, heating chamber uh, for the calc. It has to be uh, tightly sealed at all times. So this is how it looks like when you unscrew it or remove it basically. You probably need to uh, rinse this a couple of times with water, perhaps even take your chance with a couple of uh, drops of vinegar in order to maintain it. Now the actual ironing uh, section of the unit. Here you can see another screw that you need to remove if you want to take apart or disassemble this section. So here we have the indication light and the button for instant steam. And the other one is naturally underneath. Now the final bottom metallic side of the ironing uh, detachable unit. So as you can see the surface is fairly decently preserved but as I said uh, a couple of moments back that I still suspect that uh, these holes are uh, some or maybe a lot of them they're still uh, somehow clogged and there's basically still a calc buildup underneath so uh, clogging this completely hmm, that is an interesting task but I'll probably not go about it uh, maybe a close-up okay finally so now we can actually proceed with the disassembly you'll be taking apart your steam ironing uh, unit make sure that if the ladder was working before or operational that it has completely cooled off uh, the unit itself and the detachable ironing hot plate uh, also because you know you don't want to burn something or get uh, hot splashes of water when you'll be taking apart the unit and the next thing that you'll need is a set of torque screwdrivers or torque bits. I, I can't really say which ones uh, do you need in terms of number. I basically use one of these to do this job. I could use the other screwdriver that I have, but this one will be um, much more secure. Okay, so let's start. I have unscrewed all the six uh, torque screws that were securing all the plastic pieces together. Um, the screws are basically completely the same, thread design, uh, head diameter, and I think that you need the T20 torque bit in order to achieve this. So now we can proceed further. Uh, now these two uh, side plastic panels, uh, they come off, you know, like so. You move, you move them away from the unit but they are held together by some locking latches so you need to um, unlock those and then just this simply comes off and they are uh, located here and on this side so you need to go underneath and you know unlock it or dislodge it we probably need some sort of a flat headed screwdriver to do this and when you're doing this on both sides you have to 
push it, you know, away or put something underneath or in between uh, the, the bottom side of the plastic and the side panel. So this is how it looks like then when you have removed uh, the both plastic side panels. Uh, now in order to remove the top plastic cover on each side you have these two additional uh, locking latches which you push down and you slide something underneath and just push everything up and then this uh, piece of the plastic should simply just come off. So then you just remove plastic cover and the entrails are exposed. Now let's have a closer look at each sections of the unit. Okay let's start analyzing the steaming uh, station or the ironing unit uh, from the back so the intake section. Uh, this is where of course your reservoir with distilled uh, preferably distilled water would be placed or seated onto and through these uh, intake hoses uh, this one actually being the intake, this is where the water is pumped into the electromagnet which creates uh, suction and then through this system over here uh, this is a feedback hose where uh, excess water is then uh, drained back into the reservoir making this very efficient and eco-friendly so that you don't waste too much water while ironing your clothes or something else. But uh, what I find particularly a bit more alarming is that the uh, 220 volt cable is very near uh, you could say water um, because when I first uh, got this unit uh, not to mention that everything was white on the bottom uh, there was also uh, water pretty much all around so having this cable uh, so close um, can be a bit of a design flaw or hazard of course it is seated uh, Highly, it's not sitting on the bottom of the plastic, but nevertheless. And here, I think this is, has to be some sort of a reed switch because in the uh, reservoir, uh, you have a very tiny, I think it's a sort of a neodymium magnet um, placed on the plastic on the inner section. So when this is seated, then probably this creates contact and that you know, sends a signal to the logic board that, hey, uh, the reservoir has been... Uh, add it, connect it, so you can probably start pumping water. So something of that like. Uh, yeah, let me show you. So this is basically uh, the magnet over here. This is what creates contact probably with that uh, reed switch. Uh, this would then be your uh, main logic board which controls all the action depending on how you press or uh, press the buttons or switch them. Um, this is basically a uh, redundant remark as this is the only uh, PCB in the entire uh, unit plus the ironing detachable hot plate but nevertheless so then water comes through here goes into the heating chamber where you have the heating element and then uh, that heats up the water to a gas state and then the steam is I think pumped by this electromagnet through this thicker rubber hose which we'll see when we'll remove this section as well and then that goes through uh, that hose to the actual ironing detachable hot plate. I don't know what is this uh, hose for. Is this some sort of a um, air inlet or some sort of a security valve? Hmm. Maybe somebody in the comment section will enlighten me. For uh, easy maneuverability and further disassembly I'm just going to disconnect this uh, input power cable and then we're going to proceed. Uh, what's great about this is that uh, as you can see of course naturally everything is color coded so when you disconnect something you know even if you have a memory of a goldfish uh, you won't make a mistake by uh, improperly connecting this 
everything back together when you'll be uh, reassembling your unit. So the control panel plastic, this just uh, lifts off, so I'm going to do that and show you underneath how is everything and then we'll proceed further. Even here you have these two uh, connectors so when you uh, disconnect everything and try to reattach it you won't make any mistakes because everything is again as stated uh, color coded. But of course this is not the case uh, everywhere. Oh look, I just noticed this. Uh, these two connectors, uh, they basically look like uh, the ones from your PC for power. From here on, I'm recording this disassembly or teardown uh, video uh, the following day, so the 22nd of September. Uh, today is predicted heavy forecast and also rain, so the lightning uh, will probably be not so good, so the picture will not be as crisp as it was yesterday. I'll try to do my best when I'll be zooming on different parts to give you the best experience. As stated previously, not everything is color coded or basically when you're dealing with uh, circuitry you do have to make some sort of marks on the ladder so you know uh, which wire goes where. And on this particular circuitry board I did make some markings so I know which wire goes where. Oh, and uh, yeah, this is the secondary PCB, even though I stated that uh, there is no other. Yeah, I a bit forgot about that. So now I'm going to remove the control panel, uh, so disconnect all the wires. So which ones do I need to remove? So this one definitely. So it goes over here to this part of the central or main PCB. Then these two wires or connectors. And yeah, this cable. But basically, uh, here uh, the cable is um, through this connector is just soldered onto the PCB. So I'll just disconnect, disconnect it from this connector or the female socket underneath. So when you have done all the necessary decoupling, this is with what you're left with. A bit more up close shot. Uh, this is basically the main uh, power cable. This is where the 220 volt cable is attached through that coupling. Let's not forget about that. I have uh, removed the circuitry from the plastic control panel, so now we have a closer look. So as you can see, all the connectors are marked, so you know which goes where. We have the line to, the heater to, I already made my markings. Uh, so this is some sort of a, I think a relay, a potentiometer of some sorts. You have your resistors. Okay, let's flip it on the other side. And then on the other side you have a bunch of SMDs. Uh, the, well, they're mostly resistors. You have some capacitors. I think this is a transistor, some LEDs, and they chip. Uh, this will be all noted in the description part of the video. We are slowly uh, stripping away the excess parts in order to gain uh, much needed detail or basically isolating all the possible parts uh, inside the unit so we can have a closer look at each and every one of them. So uh, now I'm probably going to give you a slow overview from the top at the rest of the unit, do some commentary uh, about uh, where the existing wires go to and then we're going to look at the main logic board. Now if we wanted to remove the main uh, hose with the wiring which goes to the a detachable ironing stand or the hot plate attached to it. We have pretty much removed all there is, so now we would have to uh, detach the rubber hoses, uh, well, singular, not plural, uh, and we can do that um, at two junctions. One is over here, right next to the electromagnet, which is mounted onto the heating chamber, or we do it over here where this 
underneath a, a brass coupling case. So we just squeeze these two sections together and we slide uh, the metallic holder away from the rubber hose and we do that over here as well. Uh, the problem here is of course that the hose is secured on pretty tightly so even when we remove this we won't be able to just you know rock this left and right and try it and push it down because it's secured on to there really tightly even if you try to go underneath with a uh, flathead screwdriver so you'll probably have to just use an exacto blade and cut the hose away at uh, over here sort of get a feel where the brass connector ends just cut it and then make an incision over here as well and then just remove the excess rubber of course that causes the rubber hose to eventually to become very short but you know there's a lot of reserve in terms of length so we do this over here or here then when we would uh, remove the rubber hose we would need to unlock these two locking latches on the bottom side of the plastic uh, case and then we would just simply uh, slide the entire cable out so maybe I can show you that so then this just simply you know sort of slides out you know, it's a bit difficult doing this with single hand but you get the picture uh, basically you don't need to unscrew these two screws these are just uh, placed here to secure the holder that crimps uh, all the cables and the hoses together. So this comes off. Then we just lift out this from the cradle. And it goes out. As you can see, of course, uh, and if I was to go and really disassemble, of course, I would have to remove the hose as well. So everything then slides out very easily. Okay, now let's switch our attention a little bit towards the wires that go onto the electromagnets. So the red wire, the top one, goes to this electromagnet and goes onto the circuitry. And there is a lower blue wire, this one goes to the second electromagnet and then makes a split. And then this goes to, I think it is the bottom connector. Yep, I'm right. Uh, then here we have uh, the brown wire that goes from the uh, second electromagnet, you know, the one that provides the suction or the pumping of the water onto the circuitry board. So we're going to remove or uncouple these cables. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the black wire. Okay, so where does this go to? Ah, it goes to this connector. Okay, good. Uh, then this wire over here with the connector, this would be your, uh, yeah, that is the supposed read switch. So we're going to disconnect that as well. Okay, now what are these wires here, the black and the, the white ones? Okay, so let's have a look. So uh, these two pairs of wires, one is fixated on top of the heating chamber and the other uh, is underneath on the side. So I'm probably guessing these are some sort of temperature sensors. One is uh, to measure the water uh, temperature going into the chamber and then the other one uh, you could see sort of uh, when uh, the water reaches a gas state, so uh, steam. So that is my suggestion or basically my uh, guessing. So we're going to remove or unclock that connector on the PCB board as well. Now the only wires that are still connected onto the PCB or the main logic board are the two brown wires and the first one, the top one, goes to the heater. So that would be right over here. And the second one, so the middle one, uh, goes to uh, through here and ends up on the connector. I don't know uh, why do these wires go through over here and why they're even um, you know, fixated onto the heating chamber. Is there something behind these wires? Another uh, sensor perhaps? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, now, uh, of course, the bottom connector, uh, which we have already disconnected. Uh, now, this would be the secondary pole for the heater.
So this one goes underneath and ends up right over there. Okay, a little bit of a close-up shot. All the cables have been uh, disconnected from the respective places from the main logic or PCB board. So now we're going to focus our attention a little bit on the ladder. Let's see what we have on the board. So we have this big bulky thing, that's your relay. We have your resistor, capacitor, another resistor, lots of capacitors, electrolytic ones. We have a, uh, well, let's see, oh, yeah, this is the chip. This is, I think, an uh, oscillator. Yeah, and other components. Another angle. But you know, I do wonder uh, what are these connecting uh, slots for? This pair over here and these black ones over here. Hmm, interesting. And on the back we have some uh, SMD resistors and capacitors mostly. I think this is another transistor. Uh, I think this is a Zener diode. And we have another chip. Uh, the steaming unit is becoming poorer and poorer. We have removed pretty much all of the uh, components inside. We can fairly easily remove this uh, reed switch. We just need to unlock this latch, push it back, and it just slides out like so. Okay, but uh, for example, this can also come off. Um, you have here on the back you have two locking latches again you push them down and that just this just slides off and uh, just lifts off like so but you know here is uh, still water inside so I'm not going to proceed with that so if you were to of course uh, get this removed you need to uncouple the tubing as well I would prefer that you do it uh, at the electromagnet side so over here and also uh, this tube as well naturally so then you would just uh, slide this sort of a rubbery uh, plastic thing like so and you would have one end exposed and you would just tilt the electromagnet towards yourself and if it was uncoupled or even here you could just you know slide it out now we can imagine that we have also removed the electromagnet and of course we have decoupled the rubber hose from this uh, coupling as well and remove the cable with the main hose line and we're just pretty much you know supposedly left with the heating or, or the steam chamber so how do we remove this well basically underneath here you have a very small torque screw so you remove that and then you just lift the chamber out like so and just pops out okay a little bit of a close-up shot so as you can see there, the screw. So then of course you might ask yourself, what is uh, this screw for? If you remove this one, the entire, you could say, white plastic assembly comes out or lifts out. So uh, you can remove both screws uh, and then remove the entire uh, housing with the chamber inside or you can just unscrew that small torque screw and just lift out the chamber of course you need to uh, decouple or unhook the rubber hose from this section as well or you can also do it underneath or down there and that's it uh, sadly the wires that are connected so this temperature sensor which you know which i'm guessing that it is and this one over here and all of these wires and this connector this everything comes off with the chamber i wouldn't recommend unscrewing these two screws over here to try to separate the cables or even over here uh, because i'm not sure how they are uh, glued or connected onto the chamber um, because this is uh, assembled in such a way so it should be accurate so if you remove these elements i don't know if you will put them back on whether depending on the function how will they operate and how the entire steam ironing unit uh, will perform so i forgot to mention that you also need to uh, remove on a, on a hook 
this rubber hose as well and by doing this you need to unhook this circular metallic plastic holding clip as well you just push something in this hole and you know just push it out and it should break free I also suggest that you uncouple it at this uh, junction as well so that you have free room to play with the chamber in order to clean it and the likes just another quick note on the uh, heating or the steam chamber uh, these are basically two separate metallic compartments and I think these is these are just simply a uh, TIG welded together that is just my you know, suspicion now I'm just going to reassemble everything back together so all the parts that have been removed from the unit they're going to be returned to their respective places all the cables connected uh, but I'm not going to add the top plastic cover or the plastic side panels uh, we're going to try sort of a you could say live test so without all the covering to determine whether the noise is even louder than when everything was sealed up or is it even less irritable so we'll see I have put everything uh, back together all the wires and everything uh, filled the reservoir with a small amount of water inside it is connected to the AC outlet or the extension cord so now we'll just uh, press the red button and um, listen to the noise again so get ready to turn down the volume on your speakers here we go. Okay, so it's still loud and obnoxious. Hmm. While I'm waiting for the main uh, steam station or unit to cool off, not to mention the detachable ironing hot plate as well, let's do some analysis on possible origins uh, and reasons for why uh, this is happening. So the unmistaken sound uh, that you heard. I think that the source of my problems is uh, this electromagnet, at least I think this is electromagnet of some sort or a, basically a valve uh, regulated uh, thing. I don't think this one is problematic, only uh, this part in particular. And what is the problem with this is that you, it's not like you can go on eBay, find the replacement new part and order it, have it delivered and then make the swap. Uh, and that is because not only uh, you cannot find any markings on the plastic housing of this part anywhere, but also it's not like you can just simply remove it even though on the back you do have um, some sort of a bolt that you could unscrew it I did try that but I turned in I tried uh, sliding this out but nothing happened so I think that this is probably hmm I don't know spot welded TIG welded onto the um, actual heating chamber or the gas unit so if you want to replace this, you need to get the entire unit and uh, the problem with this particular ironing or steam unit is that because it's so outdated, uh, the parts are no longer manufactured. So even if you would go to your authorized repair shop, you couldn't get the part. Uh, so the only solution to uh, fixing this problem is that if you were to require the same uh, unit down to the actual model, so manufacture the same of course, and make the necessary swap that's the only way you could fix the problem of course taking into consideration that the donor unit would have a 
a clean or a basically functional uh, part this one that with my case is broken and that is the only way how you could fix this there is no other way at least to my knowledge uh, maybe somebody in the comment section will enlighten me but this is uh, my, these are my conclusions as such I have as you can see reattached uh, the top plastic cover and also the side panels and everything has been secured with the six torque screws so now I have the time I think to do a smaller disassembly subsection guide for the actual detachable uh, hot plate or the ironing unit itself and we're going to start by unscrewing the screw that is located underneath over here then this uh, plastic back cover just simply slides off or falls off so this is at or with what you're left with. Uh, we have here, as you can see, additional torque screws that we'll need to remove. As you can see here, some cables, wirings. This is where the rubber hose goes to. So let's remove the next two screws. After which we also remove this plastic cover as well. You see how it slides off nicely. However, we have another hidden screw located over here. After the four screws have been removed, uh, the basic premise for further disassembly is that you just sort of lift off this piece of the plastic and these side panels, they go out. This is an entirely single plastic. Uh, but the problem now is, um, well, I've sort of ran out of time, so I can't give you uh, further details on the disassembly of the actual uh, ironing stand or the hot plate. But, you know, uh, it's pretty straightforward, so I th don't think you'll have any uh, additional problems. Just watch out, look or observe for hidden screws. I think you uh, have some Phillips screws over here when you remove the side panels, and I think that you'll be fine. So, sadly, um, we won't be going into full disassembly of uh, the actual ironing uh, unit itself. Sorry. We have reached uh, the last stop in our video tutorial or this disassembly guide for this particular Bosch Sensix uh, steam ironing unit. The point of the video was to uh, show you how to take apart this particular unit, also give you sort of a, uh, a bit thorough overview on how these units operate and also give you some additional uh, ideas or oversight on what uh, possible components can go wrong, what you need to look out for, and I also showed you uh, what's wrong with this particular uh, household item, the irritable or irritating noise as such, uh, possible solutions or diagnose. Uh, I'm really sorry we weren't able to cover the disassembly of the actual uh, detachable ironing stand with the hot plate on it uh, but you know it's really straightforward after removing those uh, four screws the unit comes apart fairly easily in conclusion therefore i hope that you found the video to be covered uh, enough so detailed fully explained as much as possible that you learned something new maybe even use this video as a sort of a ruler uh, to determine how to fix other other brands uh, type of uh, steam ironing units for your household so but if you do have any additional uh, suggestions ideas uh, recommendations constructive criticism list all of that below uh, in the comment section below which is open and of course I invite you to a civil discussion don't forget to like the video if you like my content subscribe as well and uh, share the video as well naturally hope to see you again in another video very soon this has been david or dave signing off bye bye